Hey folks, how's it going? It's Friday, March 10th, 2017. As always, I'm Jake Baldino here to talk about some video game stuff that happened this week. The first thing we got to talk about, it finally dropped after the reveal last week. We got our first look at gameplay for the sequel to Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War. And it looks like there's a lot of war going on. Good one. Shut up. I was pretty surprised how lengthy this game trailer really was, and it's kind of like a vertical slice of all the new stuff we're going to see in this game, but it seems like they added a lot, considering a lot of the regular on-foot gameplay and climbing and combat seems very much ripped from the original Shadow of Mordor. Uh, there's so much more going on in terms of the Nemesis system, and now you can work with your band of branded orcs and how they can be your friends and allies. They can betray you, they can become more of a friend, you can claim them as a VIP once you conquer an area and let them run it and that's gonna be very interesting because the map looks absolutely huge this time. You can jump around between different real world Lord of the Rings locations and basically conquer Mordor. Not to mention now there's flying mounts, there's different types of towns, more abilities with Celebrimbor's Spectre and it just seems like there is so much more going on here. It seems like they just keep heaping and tons and tons of stuff onto this game. Gameplay wise, that looks very awesome, but I'm very curious to see if they can really keep the other side of Shadow of Mordor, you know, the real story here and the stuff it adds to the Lord of the Rings lore and how it interprets things. With Celebrimbor forming a new ring of power here, I'm very curious to see how they're gonna tackle that stuff and have more slower, quiet story moments amidst all the craziness going on. And I mean absolute craziness because this game does look really crazy. But speaking of crazy, we do have to acknowledge the League of Legends cheater lawsuit that went down. We finally have all the information about it. And in not really much of a surprise to anyone, it looks like League of Legends won to the tune of $10 million they're going to be getting in this settlement. For those of you who haven't been following it, I have, even though I don't play a lot of League of Legends, it's, it's still pretty interesting. Riot Games filed a lawsuit against League Sharp. League Sharp was like a subscription-based bot-based cheating mechanism, which you would give them your account, and then they would use bots to help you win matches. And, you know, that's just the regular old straight-up definition of cheating for these types of games. So, Riot, of course, went after them. Not only does the agreement have League Sharp paying League of Legends and Riot $10 million, but they also have to give up all control of their websites to Riot and completely shut down, which uh, technically they already have shut down in January, just an FYI. That's when it all actually went down, but just now we're hearing about the actual terms of the settlement. League of Legends won the case by demonstrating that League Sharp went around it's DMCA rules and really basically just jumping over League of Legends anti-cheating practices within the game. So by the law, that right there impacts the DMCA laws. From following stuff, it didn't really ever seem like League Sharp was really doing itself any favors because it was a technically a shady company that did shady things. But I think the big takeaway here is that yes, these things can happen. Riot just won these case against cheaters and Nintendo just won a case against 3DS modders. This is a real thing that can go down. But it also just goes to show how much money there is in like cheating and using accounts and, and stuff like that. The fact that this company could pay out to Riot $10 million means that League Sharp was making a shit ton of money. And that's really crazy, but it's just food for thought. Hopefully now League of Legends has less cheaters. I think that's always a good thing. But we also have to acknowledge what is going on in the world of No Man's Sky. Yes, I know, I'm right there with you. But they released an announcement video of a new update, adding a couple of new features, including a new permadeath difficulty mode. Uh, also, vehicles that can traverse the environment, which seemed pretty interesting and actually look like fun gameplay mechanics, if not a little jittery and jumpy. And now you can actually find other bases left behind by other players, and players can leave greeting messages within those bases. That seems pretty interesting. I really only passively follow these No Man's Sky updates just because I'm still just so burned. But I don't know if you guys remember, but I made a pack that I would go back one year later after release and, and try it out and see what they really added. And honestly, right now, this already seems like a good example of them finally doing the right thing. However, if you want to interpret it differently, uh, doing the right thing wasn't done when they ripped players off from the beginning. But that's, you know, up to your interpretation. Also, if you're into VR shit like me, check out this cool video that Audi put out of all people. Audi was doing this weird promotional thing uh, where they had an actual real world sandbox which people could mess around with and create sand dunes and little tracks in the sand and then they would use VR infrared scanning technologies using Xbox One Kinect cameras, I shit you not, to actually scan this sandbox world into a VR environment and allow you to race an Audi in the big sand hills and dunes that you created. I don't know if they'd ever apply this to real game stuff, but it's just fun to see people pushing the boundaries with these technologies. My voice is killing me. I am so sick. Oh my god. Also, just an FYI, if you are on the East Coast of the United States, PAX East is going on this weekend in Boston. I'm gonna be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm gonna try and plan meetups on the fly, but if you're there, keep an eye out for me, say hi. I don't bite, let's hang out. Also, maybe we'll get some news from PAX East. Not a lot of huge announcements happen there, but we will get hands-on with lots of games, most importantly, Crash Bandicoot and uh, just a lot of indie games and cool shit. But PlayStation users, you need to know about the new PlayStation 4.50 update that is out today. It adds a lot of important things 
things for some players, most notably external hard drive support for your games, which people have been asking for for a long time. But the other thing worth noting, I think, for PS4 Pro owners like, you know, myself, it is now going to have boost mode available, which allows you to turn it on and potentially increase the performance of PlayStation 4 games that aren't optimized or patched for PS4 Pro. We have seen it in action a little bit with some testers and stuff, but honestly, I can't wait to see Digital Foundry get their hands on this for real. And since we are on the topic of PlayStation, it seems like Naughty Dog is definitely going to be done with the Uncharted series. However, I have heard that so many times before. Co-president of Naughty Dog, Evan Wells, went on record saying that Naughty Dog doing an Uncharted after the Lost Legacy is unlikely. I would never say never, but we've got Last of Us 2 on our plates and there's so much other stuff that we want to explore. He basically went on to say that they are only one core team, so they can't branch out and work on different projects at the same time, although they would love to, but it just seems like they have more ideas and new things they want to make and basically move on from Uncharted. They also, I said something very similar after Uncharted 3, but ending on Uncharted 4 does kind of make some sense if you did beat it, but Lost Legacy coming out is probably going to reinvigorate people's excitement for the series, so could we see spinoffs? Maybe. But I think I like hearing Naughty Dog saying that they have new ideas that they want to work on, and I hope those ideas is just another Jack and Daxter game. Please, God damn it. And also, since sometimes we like to point out silly things that people made that have to do with games that's really creative, check out this dumb thing we found on Reddit. This is a Super Mario lamp where you actually have to jump up and punch the box and then it turns the light on. I don't, like, if that's how you want to live your life, if that's how you want to get out your aggression, that's one way to turn on a light. I would love to fill it with quarters, and then every time you hit it, it just fucking falls all over your face. But on the topic of Nintendo, a lot of you guys on Twitter reached out to me and asked me to take a look at this video. This is a video by Crobcat, who does videos like this very often, and basically it's a compilation highlighting issues that people are having with the Nintendo Switch. Now, you see these types of videos with every single console launch, and it's good to get a glimpse of, like, the collection that people are having with problems with launch, and I think Absolutely, Nintendo and other companies, even if you're an early adopter, you should never be used as essentially a tester for a product. But on the flip side, if you think about it, nobody ever makes a video about people just totally cool with their consoles that don't have any problems. This is a video designed to point out the problems. And I'm not saying that there are any problems, but myself personally and everyone else I know hasn't had any problems with their Nintendo Switches. I'm really enjoying mine for the most part. Plus, and I don't want to sound too harsh or anything, but some of these videos actually kind of exist as validation for people who were angry at the Switch or hated the Switch before it even launched. Now their opinions are validated by this video showing all the problems with it. So basically everyone gets something out of these types of videos, but I think it's important for most people to just get out of this. Just be aware of the problems that the console does have, but take it at a reasonable face value. Not every single Nintendo Switch is busted. But enough with that, that's just my personal opinion. The next thing I wanted to point out to you guys is that the beta signups are live for Quake Champions. So if you are a PC gamer, if you are someone that wasn't to Quake, I'm very curious to check out this new Quake because I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, but the beta signups are live. We linked it down below. I signed up. Hopefully something good comes out of that soon. And speaking of other games that people still play sometimes, Destiny Age of Triumph is revealed. What? Fuck you. What? Shut up. Destiny had a live stream revealing Age of Triumph. This is the next bit and basically the last hurrah of the original Destiny. And the details are pretty much as follows. The big thing here is that all raids will now be bumped up to the current light level, kind of reinvigorating and breathing new life into the raids. Not only that, there are going to be weekly featured raids with modifiers that actually change the difficulty level. And the big takeaway here is, like I previously said, this is essentially the last big event leading up to the inevitable Destiny 2. I know everyone has different thoughts about Destiny, so I think we'll save that for another video. But we do have to talk about one thing, and that is the console giveaway we do every single week. Week. You guys probably know how it works by now. There's a link down below. You click it, you sign up, you entered once, and then you're entered forever. So then every single week I go in, close my eyes, and randomly choose one winner to win a free console of their choice. A lot of you have been asking if we're going to add Nintendo Switches to that giveaway. Yes, we are. Not currently yet because they're not widely available still, but we will be adding that sooner rather than later. But the winner for this week's giveaway is going to be this person right here. But that's what's going on this week. Now we got to talk down in the comments. First things first, let me know what you think of that new Overwatch character that was announced last week. I missed mentioning it. Also, if you are a player of Destiny, how do you feel about Age of Triumph? Is this going to get you to jump back in and play some old raids again with your friends? Also, do you play League of Legends? Do you think these cheaters were harshly penalized? Have you encountered people that use these cheating mechanisms? And also, with this new No Man's Sky update and the fact that it adds vehicles on the ground, is that enough to get you to play again? I don't know for sure for myself. I do definitely want to hear from you. And if you downloaded the new PlayStation update, if you are a PlayStation person, uh, did the update work for you? Is there any issues? Let us know any thoughts, observations, comments down below. I'll be there answering as many comments as I can. I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Jake Baldino as well, if you have anything to say to me over there. Say it to my face. You guys know the deal, though. Thank you so much for coming around. As always, clicking the like button helps us out a ton. We appreciate it. But if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.
<laughs> Shit. No, no pizza Almost forgot. <laughs>